occurred to the end of the 17th century, right around the time that we're getting into the 17, excuse me, the, you know, the, the 1680s, the 1690s, right around 1700. Life expectancy in Virginia is expanding. They've moved beyond the tidewater, the water is better, the food supply is better, people are getting seasoned to the tropical diseases, and the life expectancy lengthens from about five years out to about 25. Now think that you're the planter. You ha can either purchase an indentured servant contract for 500 pounds and get seven years of service, or you can buy a slave for 1,000 pounds. Now, your seven years of service cost 500 pounds with the indenture. At the end of that seven years, you have to purchase another indenture to get seven more years of service, and then another indenture to get seven more. So 21 years of service costs you 1,500 pounds. To get 21 years of service out of a slave who's going to live 25 years, you pay 1,000 pounds. And the added bonus, any child that slave has, also becomes one of your laborers. So on a purely economic standpoint, once life expectancy grew in colonial Virginia, once it lengthened out, it made it economic sense to employ slavery as the main economic system, main labor system, and drop indentured servitude. That's the first theory. And there are many historians, including Russell Menard and Lorena Walsh, that work in colonial Chesapeake society and slave studies that say that that's the main reason for the switch. None of these historians, by the way, claim that there's only one reason for the switch, but most of them have a major argument that they think makes most sense. Theory number two. Theory number two is a very simple theory, but also a very powerful one. Theory number two basically argues that conditions in England were getting better. And as conditions in England got better and as the Industrial Revolution really did ramp up, it produced new jobs in England. So there were fewer people who felt the need that they needed to escape England. There were more jobs available, the labor situation in England stabilized, and there were fewer people willing to take the incredible risk of moving to the new world, indenturing themselves, knowing how dangerous it was, dangerous it was, it, there were letters going back between England and Virginia. People in England knew how deadly Virginia was, which just shows you how desperate they were in the early 17th century to e even know they knew that to sign up for an indenture contract. But by the 1680s, 1690s, 1700, things in England were getting better, people were less willing to leave, they had less need to leave, and the indentured servant pool simply dries up. There are not as many people willing to come, and planters still need high numbers of laborers, and so instead they switch from indentured servitude to buying African slaves. So that, it's a supply, theory number two is a supply and demand theory. The third theory has to do with the very specific action in England. In 1672, an English company, a, a, a joint stock company, much like the earlier Virginia Company of London or even the Plymouth Country Company that started the Plymouth Plantation, a, a, a joint stock company was founded in 1672 which was named the British Royal Africa Corporation or the British Royal Africa Company. Up until this point, most slaves in the colonial American, uh, colonial America, uh, especially in Virginia and the Carolinas, were purchased from Dutch traders. Uh, but they were very expensive. Uh, the English were trying to curtail trade with the Dutch. There was a series of wars in the 17th century between the English and the Dutch, uh, aptly named the Anglo-Dutch Wars. And so they wanted to curtail English colonists giving money to their commercial rivals, the Dutch, for slaves. And the English established their own trading company for African slaves called the British Royal Africa Company. After 1672, it is much easier and even a little bit cheaper for English colonists in Virginia and the Carolinas and Maryland in the deep in the South to purchase slaves. It's, it's simply easier. There's a larger supply of slaves. Some historians talk about the fact that this thus makes it easier to go towards slavery and drop indentured servitude. If you put number two and three together, it makes even more sense. The supply of indentured servants in England, leave, willing to leave England, dries up at exactly the time, same time it's easier to import and purchase slaves through the English company.